good evening. Last time we looked at the patent document and we saw what kind of information you can get it from it. And as I told you, all patent documents are published 18 months after they are filed, irrespective of whether you get the patent or not. Because the whole objective of patenting system is to bring the new knowledge to public domain. Now, this creates a vast repository of information. Although I written here 90 billion patent document, but recently US patent office which creates the worldwide database of patents has already announced the database has exceeded 100 million documents. And this body of knowledge is growing very rapidly. Every week US patent office issues more than 5000 patents. Monday their server is updated. So, Tuesday morning when you have a look at it more than 5000 patents have been added. And look at all the European countries, France, Germany, UK, Japan and now China, Korea you are adding close to 3 million documents every year. And what is important to notice 70 percent of this is not published anywhere else. We are an academic institutions where professors put emphasis on only research papers, journals. So, you are only looking at 30 percent of new knowledge which is coming in public domain. And if you are not looking at patent document, you are keeping your eyes shut to 70 percent of new knowledge which is not getting published anywhere else. And thanks to information and communication technologies, today all this is available to us at our fingertips. Previously all these patent office used to publish books containing abstracts, but today all these databases are web enabled and you can access them from anywhere, from your car, from anywhere through your mobile phones. So, and that access is very free. All this scientific journal which you access through IIT library, IIT ends up spending crores of rupees, but this is all free. Now, we saw the type of information you can get it from these documents. You have technical information from the description and the drawings of the invention. Then your legal information from the scope of the claim and what it covers and what is the current legal status of that invention. You get business relevant information which identifies who the inventor is, who the assignee that the owner is, where it was filed, when it was filed, <coughs> what is the life of that patent and so on. Up till now governments used to do some trend analysis based on the data available with them to use it in public policy, science, technology, innovation policies. But because of availability of these databases as well as software tools to analyze this data, manipulate this data, a new science is emerging which is called science of analyzing patent information to discover relationships and trends which are very difficult to see when you look at a single patent document. When you are looking at a single patent document, you are looking at a single invention. But when you look at hundreds or sometimes even thousands of patent documents in a particular area of technology, you can get to see a connection between technologies, connection between organizations and trends. Now, I will be using these words hundreds and thousands of patents because pace of technology change is very high. In each technology area lot of patents get filed. If I ask you a question how many patents are there for a washing machine? Did I talk to you about this? How many patents for washing machine do you think are there or in a year can be filed? Some guess? Every month there are 300 patents on a washing machine. So, you are talking about 3600 patents in a year. Now, as an engineer you will wonder what is there in a washing machine. 
there is a drum, there is a motor and there is a control system put into a box, nothing else is there. 3600 patterns every year and we have analyzed these patterns for 6 years which means we analyzed 20,000 patterns. So that tells you the amount of innovation which goes on in the world in a simple thing like washing machine in 5 years, 6 years time you have 20,000 patterns. And who is my customer? Some guess for whom I am doing this? Samsung, any other guess? Whirlpool Samsung. My customer is world's number one detergent manufacturer. He is not a machine manufacturer because detergent formulation changes as for the configuration of the machine. You go to the market, you have different formulation for top loading machine and a different formulation for the front loading machine. So, formulation changes as per the configuration of the machine. He is number one, he wants to remain number one. So, he wants to keep a track of what is happening to the machine. You go to his R&D center, I have been there. In the lab, there are 50 to 60 washing machines of different configuration came, they kept and they keep on trying different formulas. So, there is a kind of level of technology monitoring they do. So, I produce every month a report of those 300 patterns summarizing what is new there. <laughs> so, therefore, I am saying when you look at hundreds and thousands of patterns documents, you certain see a certain trends which you do not see when you look at a single document. Now, this involves citation analysis, mapping and pattern intelligence. Question is why shall we do it? In a commercial world, People keep everything confidential, do not talk about it till the product hits the market. Even Tata Nano was being developed, board of directors did not get to see the product, a car. So, that is the level of secrecy which is maintained. Now, if you want any information, the only information which is made public which public may by law is a patent information because patent is filed early in the game and that patent becomes public after 18 months. So, patent information is the only information you have till the product gets into the market. So, if you are doing some computer intelligence technology monitoring, that is the only source of information you have. And when patents are filed early in the game, majority of patents are economically not significant they represent a technical change. You require a considerable amount of design optimization, material substitution, scaling up before it becomes commercially viable. But it still represents technical change, it tells you technical direction. Now, at that point of time, if you are looking at some value of a pattern, there has to be a proxy indicator. The level of follow on activity is a kind of proxy indicator. So, that means what you have is important. The technical content related legal and business information has lot of commercial applications. Let us look at how can we use it. But before that, when we talk about citations, we saw the patent document. It describes the previous key patents, talks about the lacunae of those patents and need for the invention. So, that shows you a connection between those patents and the your, that invention under consideration. And we always say highly cited paper is very important. Similarly, highly cited pattern is also very important. You take any area of technology, start going backward. Finally, you will come to one particular pattern which starts the whole area. So, highly cited pattern is also very important. There are seminal patterns which started that particular technology area. And if your patent is important, existing people in the business feel threatened. They immediately start doing what is called inventing around, looking at lacunae of your invention, trying to address them, doing derivative work, doing analogous work. So, that they have position of some value which later on they can barter or use it to protect themselves.
Yeah, yeah, please, please. Hi. The hyperloop. Ah, okay. Yeah, um, I suppose that you could not have filed a patent for the whole system, or could you file a patent for the whole system? Yes. Yes? Because I want to understand the relation between patent and papers. Uh, because papers often are like conceptual, this is what you could do. And is then patent just the, the operational end of it? Or like not necessarily. See, you have a new concept. You may decide not to patent. You may write a paper. Let it go to public domain. A lot of scientists and engineers also write papers out of their ignorance that it can be patented. A lot of patentable ideas get into papers. Yes. So there's no fixed regularity of the No. There are requirements of patentability that must be met which we have talked while you are not here. So, as long as those requirements are made, you can patent it. Not everything can be patented, like discovery cannot be patented. Yeah. Okay. I, I will catch up. Yeah. <laughs> 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 the first and foremost is R&D management. All of us manage R&D. Now, what happens is, when we start, we need to look at what already exists. Because we think about some solution, look at some problem, think about a solution, and not necessarily that nobody has thought of it before. So, what already exists, therefore, we call it IP landscaping, looking at all the patents in that area and what do they cover, and then start building upon it, find out what are the gaps. It is an unaddressed gap, these are called white space mapping and build upon it. And when you are trying to do something, you are trying to address a particular problem. Problem in given area of technology are known to the people who are working in that area or in that business. And everybody tries to solve the problem based on their background, based on their experience. So, for a given problem, there can be number of different solutions. You will try to solve it based on your background and experience. Other people will try to solve it in a different way. And when you look at all these patterns, you get to see a different solutions which people are trying to propose for a given problem. Then you can compare your proposed solution vis-a-vis -vis others in terms of how unique it is, how cost effective it is, and how acceptable it is going to be. And then you can evaluate your process and product plan vis are with those and decide whether to pursue it or not. You may find that somebody has already thought of that solution, worked on it and patented it. So, you are going to re-engineer the same solution, reverse engineer. Or somebody has tried and failed, why you want to walk the failure path again? You can study why he failed and then try to modify your approach. So, you can pick the winners and avoid the losers. You can define the pacing technology. What is the pacing technology? Pacing technology is those technologies which define the rate of growth of a particular sector. Today, when we are talking about electric mobility, the limitation is battery technology, energy storage technology. So, for electric mobility to become successful, the rate of growth is determined by how successful we are in the energy storage. So, for every technology area, you can define what are those pacing technologies and then focus on them. And again, when you see so large number of patterns, you become a large number of inventive ideas. And very often, we are able to cross fertilize those ideas and come up with an IP of value. And this kind of technology monitoring is a continuous process. You can't say when you started the project, you did it and then forgot about it. World is continuously inventing, filing patents. You can identify a significant thrust in a technology area. You assume you are a chemical manufacturer, you are two competitors. All of a sudden, one of those competitors switches to biotechnological process, which is environmentally clean, cost effective. 
or all of a sudden some startup sitting in some academic or research institutions has some disruptive technology. You do not want to be taken by surprise. You can check for infringement. You file your patents, some Edison sitting somewhere is building something upon that, then you can enforce your IP, tell him guy you cannot just take a free ride, you have built something but it is based on my patent. So, you need to take a license. No, I tell you, no, these 300 patterns which we used to evaluate every month, we had a one person who was a graduate engineer who was deployed to do only that work. Uh, means by a person who knows how to read, analyze patterns. So, see what happened. Uh, I actually was going to tell at the end of this lecture. You must learn how to search the patterns, there are certain techniques and analyze them. I am willing to conduct a tutorial if you people all agree on some Saturday for everybody because it will take more than one and a half hour to go through how to search worldwide database of patterns in different technology areas. Is especially we run a one year diploma in that pattern informatics. So, half a day we teach all the theoretical and half a day we give live projects. So, there can be a short program also, but I am saying uh, one tutorial I am willing to conduct once we can agree on some day time. You get to see a technology position of major players. Today every product is multi technology. Look at your smartphone, the number of technologies which are embedded into it. Now, no company can keep all the technologies at a cutting edge. Even if you have the money, there is no time because the pace of change is so high. So, each company has certain core capabilities which are maintained, rest are acquired wherever they are available based in the world. So, now you can then characterize looking at these patterns, what are the high and low growth technology for your competitors? What are their core capabilities which they are maintaining? You can characterize an emerging technology. Today everybody talks about nanotechnology. So, nanotechnology in what field, who are the people who are working, what kind of a products they are developing, what kind of applications they are developing, what kind of markets are they developing and who are these players, where are they located. So, you can characterize the emerging technology and this kind of analysis you can focus two ways. Take a particular company in that particular technology area look at all their patents irrespective of what technologies are involved. You can take a particular technology, look at all the patents irrespective of which companies are involved. Yeah, yeah sure, sure, please feel free, do not. Kodak, yeah. Yes. I mean, afterwards it's always easy to say that this pattern was so oh god that this was really danger. I mean, to say it afterwards, right? But is it actually possible when you look at, if you have the knowledge in the area to look at papers and say, oh, this is something really big? Or, like, is it actually possible or can you only say it afterwards? Right? No, so I don't know. No, it is possible to say. Problem with Kodak is common with large number of companies. Yeah, no, no, I tell you, if you read Peter Drucker, he explains this. He says this is an investment in managerial ego. You do not want to change, you do not want, you have made an investment and you want to continue doing this. He gives at that time point example of a radio to transistor, change from wall to transistor. There are radio companies which did not change from the wall, but they all got perished. So, this happens every time, you know. People looked at it and moved into that space. Sony's and of this world did move into that. See, best of the camera makers were Germans, Akfa and all those people. But the Japanese got into it because they saw the digital coming. Let us look at 
US patent leaders have not updated 2017. 2017 IBM has got more than 9300 patents and Samsung 5800 patents and so on. These are the top 10 US assignee in 2016. When you look at 9300 patents in a year with 220 working day, you are talking close to 40 patents a day which means every 12 minutes one patent to IBM. Patent granted in one year. 2017 IBM was granted 9300 patents. Now these patents are not necessarily filed in that year, they have been granted in year, so some of them have been filed previously. Now if you go back, look at 2015, the same story, IBM number 1, Samsung 2, Canon, Qualcomm. Now if you look at how many of them are US companies? Only 3. Now this is what is worrying US. Technology leadership is moving away from US. 70 percent of top guys who own the US patents are not the US companies. Look. Yes, there will be universities. Universities will have maximum of 1000 patents, means a top if I am talking about few hundred to 1000 that will be an upper limit like Stanford, 1000, upper limit I will put at about 1000. See patent also cost money, universities normally do not have that kind of free money to put it in. So 2014, 13 IBM and Samsung have a number 1 and 2 position. Actually IBM has been world leader for 25 years, before that their 18 years record. So for 25 years nobody has challenged IBM from number 1. They started actually patenting in 1911. This was their first patent of 1911 and we actually did this analysis when they completed 100 years of their patenting. So now you can compare IBM versus their key competitors. IBM, Microsoft, HP, Intel, Oracle, Apple, EMC. And what you find is 76 percent of their patents are software and services and 25 is rest. You can then look at what technology areas. Last time we talked about that IPC code for the technology. So now this is based on those IPC codes which are given there. So red and green are top two technology areas, we will see what they are. And over a five years time, all these technology area, how does the trend look like? Now this is the red one, G06Q, data processing system or methods, especially around for administrative, commercial, financial, management, forecasting system. Manager, that is, yeah. Uh, mostly algorithms and the software because in US permits that. Then this is a red one G60F technology processing. Optically complex system balance with complex models, networks using digital technologies. Now, who are the then you can go into each of those technology areas, who are the top assignee working in those. Then the next area. Now, this is Samsung distribution. Again, that red and blue is there. So, major focus on engineering, instrumentation, computer science, and communication. Now this is important to read. Just take a minute to read this. So what I have written in red is most important. 
this crossover agreement enables the two companies to innovate and operate freely. Now, they are number one and number two company in the world. They are feeling threatened by each other. Like at the periphery, they influence each other. Now, Samsung was not there 15 years ago, number two. Samsung has built. So, now IBM is taking notice of that and wants to respect. So, the only option for them is sue each other and destroy each other. But they realize that is not going to do good to them. So, they enter into an agreement say I license you my patents, you license me your patents and both of us coexist. Yes, that is right, but then you must have protected technology in those areas. Yes, yes, <laughs> Do you lose your freedom to innovate and operate freely in the market. This is where problem going to for Indian companies. Indian companies do not build portfolios. So, time is not far off when next nano will not come out of Tata Motors gate because Ford and GM will stop Tata Motors, will start asserting their patent. 80 percent of patents in India are filed by multinational companies or 20 percent, anything between 5 to 8 percent is filed by academic and research institution, only 10 to 12 percent by Indian industry. So, this is where the danger is. When you do this, you get a very valuable insight into the areas of diversification. You find IBM has a substantial portfolio of life sciences patent. Now, you wonder what a computer science company is doing in life sciences. With human genome being decoded and human genome requires a high performance computing power, IBM wants a finger in the pie. We are talking of human genomic and personalized medicine by using genomic technologies. So, IBM wants a finger in the pie, so life sciences patents. There was a time we were looking at a Japanese company called Ube Cement Company, a typical cement manufacturer with limestone, coke and clinker and Japan has strict pollution control laws. You cannot let off carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. So, this company decided to look that as a resource, build a portfolio of patents which we call as C1 chemistry because CO and CO2 both have single carbon atoms, so C1. Today, 70 percent of their income comes from C1 chemicals. So, no longer it is a cement company. Now, who are the leaders in C1 chemistry? A German company like BSF. Now, BSF needs to take a note of the cement company, which a BSF will normally not take because they will not look at a cement company as their competitors. So, you get to see that insight when you look at these patterns. You get to see a technology health of the firms and their intellectual property, how healthy they are in terms of their IP intellectual assets. You can get to see a structure of the industry. We look into the optical fibers in 80s, majority of patents are on synthesis of optical fiber starting from sand silica. In 90s, majority of patents are on the components like couplers, etc. And later on, majority of patents are on integration. What does it tell you? Technology is maturing and getting into the marketplace. Other people are not going to talk about integration. When you get to see two, three people just making optical fiber, two, three people making components, two, three people doing integration, but some one or two guys right from since optical fiber to integration. That tells you the structure of the industry. 
So, if you are operating that industry, you can go and tie up or have an appropriate arrangement. And this kind of company focus analysis also identify for you tech and really leaders, you want a joint venture partner or sometime in merger and acquisition. For merger and acquisition this is regularly done. Today government is putting lot of money in solar energy in India and solar energy research is intensive, lot of time <laughs> money is required. So, for two corporates independently, we have done a study to identify potential candidates with an IP which can be acquired. So, we zeroed down a German company which had a lot of IP portfolio. I mean that company got acquired by some other else, but which means our target was right and this is regularly done. It reduces your planning uncertainty as well as the investment risk. Over a period of time, you acquire IP portfolio, 500 patents, 5000 patents. Now, patents are like shares. You do not buy shares, just keep in the cupboard. One is cost of doing business, plus you want a return on them. Now, any patent does not have value per se. The value of patent is always vis a vis other patents in that area. Because large number of patents being there, each protects some scope. Now, what does your patent protect? What space it occupies compared to what other patents are occupying? So, value is determined by other patents in that area. It is like a real estate. You own a piece of property. Now, where that property is located? What is there in the neighborhood? In the neighborhood, there is a slum. In the neighborhood, there is a crematorium. Value of your property goes down. The value of a plot in Kafpar, it is not same as the value of Hawaii. So, that is why you need to go back to patent informatics, look at all those patents in that area, invalid, and that helps you to decide what you should do with the patent. Should you develop it? Should you license it? Should you sell it? There is a difference between selling and licensing. Licensing is giving somebody a right to use it, selling is transferring an ownership. I have a flat, I give it to you on rent, so I am permitting you to stay there for a consideration while I still own the flat. But if I sell you the flat, I have no rights over it. And even you can decide to discard. Why discard? Law gives you a right for 20 years. But technology change is so high, there are technologies which become obsolete in 3 years, 5 years. Look at your phones or electronics, computers, technology becomes absolute in 5 years. Why to protect that technology for 20 years? Why to keep on spending money? To discard it means do not renew those patents, let it go to public domain. While doing this, you can identify valuable patents. patents you filed, you did research in particular area, but it has application in many other areas. New product lines, spin off opportunities compared to your business. You can identify potential technical customers. Output of your patent is input for somebody else. You get to see there are people or building upon it, not necessarily they are infringing your patent, but they will require an output of your patent for as an input. So, you can catch them early in the game, have some joint arrangements, supply chain arrangements, whatever you want to do and develop. Technological studies, 
we talked about patentability requirement. You have an invention. Now, is it patentable? Before you go and file patent, you must look at is it patentable? In order to make it see whether it is patentable or not, you have to look at prior art. Prior art involves looking at previous patents. Validity. Last time we talked about 70 percent of the world's patent can be challenged on the grounds of validity. You are granted a patent does not mean the patent is valid. Law clearly says is a presumptive validity and validity of patent can be challenged during the lifetime of patent anytime by anybody. Competitors will keep a watch of patent which is of interest to them. They will not challenge at that point of time. Then only challenge if it starts affecting their market share and the profitability. And there is also a strategy in this because by that time you already invested. So, damage to you at that point of time is much higher. Then comes freedom to operate. We discussed by giving that example of Edison. You have a pattern, but you do not necessarily have freedom to operate. So, now do you have freedom to operate? Does your product still infringe somebody's patent and is your patent a subset of somebody's patent? So, any time patents are licensed or commercialized, this study is undertaken. I licensed two of our patents to GE. GE went to New York based firm to do a freedom to operate study done. They took six months and gave a report charge G half a million dollar. And what do you get after spending half a million dollar? You just get one page letter which says these two CSR patents are free from any encumbrances or they are a subset of patent number so and so. That is it. Now, why will G spend that half a million dollar? As per the US law, if you are a willful infringer, the damages to you are three times. So, tomorrow if G is sued by anybody, a buyer or somebody, G will produce that letter saying, sir, we did a due diligence, we were given the clearance, therefore we went ahead, we are not the willful infringer, so, minimizing damages to themselves. And this is always done even when they are commercializing any product. Today, IP professionals are employed in pharma industry and automobile industry in India. 70 percent of them is only doing a job to look at whether they have the freedom to operate or not. They are not infringing any patents. So, you basically do a detailed per hour search, identify a critical patent and analyze them, although the legal issues are handled by patent attorneys. But to do all this patentability, validity search or freedom of research is nothing but you have to go back to patent informatics. <laughs> this may come as a surprise to you. Patent informatics is also used for human resource development purposes. HR hiring, company get into new technology areas and they want to hire people who are creative, prolific inventors. Where do you go and find them? Run a search on patents, you identify those inventors, look at their track record, where they have worked, what they have done and progress the career, approach them, hiring them as an employee. If they are in an academic setting as a professor or a scientist in research establishment, hire them as a consultant. And very often look at their students because students pick up the skills and this is routinely done. We get a request saying we want to develop a product, we want an expertise in ionic gels. You run a search, find a Japanese professor 
is some 70 patents and 130 publications. Then he is a guy who gets approached for a consulting. There was a time when postdoc fellowship in US was 2000 dollars and we had a research fellow with us. He got a call from Genentech which is world's biggest biotech company offer him 50,000 dollars for a year which is twice the market rate because he had a very important patent to his credit. He went and joined them and this is as I said is routinely done. So, do not get surprised if some head hunter comes after you because you have some couple of good patents. I know you people are not chemists. But still I like to give this example without getting into the chemistry uh, to illustrate some point. My whole career of patent funding started with this case. How many of you heard of Bhopal accident? Okay, many of you. The Union Carbide Company in India, they used to manufacture pesticide. The product is called Carbaryl. and they used to make it from there are three raw materials A, B, C. We will not talk chemistry. There are two ways to do it. You react C with B, you get an intermediate called MIC that is reacted A you get a product or alternatively you can react A with B, get an intermediate, react with C and you get a product. Union carbide used to follow the first method. One day there was an accident in MIC tank that you know, the product is gaseous, it leaked, officially confirmed 10,000 deaths. The real number is much higher. 10,000 deaths is a serious issue. This is only one product in this range. You keep on changing A, you get different products and all those products are in the market. The second product is used in paddy field that is rice. Third product all of us use at home, Begon Bait which is a German buyer product, uses exactly the same chemistry. Polycarbonate sheets, transparent sheets what you have uses the same chemistry. Polyurethane foams, chairs on which you are sitting has exactly the same chemistry. So, every chemical major in the world uses this chemistry. After the accident took place, everybody started thinking. Nobody wanted another disaster on their hands. Saying, can we avoid this? Everybody launched the programs, research programs. So, at National Chemical Laboratory, we also launched it. After working for some time, our scientists had some process, applied for US patent, were granted the US patent. They were excited, jumping with a lot of joy because the scientists who did it had all the decoration which scientists, awards, honors which scientists get in this country. We looked at it, my group, we were not so excited. The scientists were upset. We told our director, these young guys do not understand the elegance of chemistry. Whatever an anger he had to say, he said that. Director called me, was Dr. Marshall Kerr at the time, say, what is the problem? Why he is so angry? I said, sir, your cupboard sells this product for 4 dollars a kg. 130 rupees at that time and dollar was 30, 32. If you put numbers on this, this product works out to be 600 rupees a kg called 20 dollars. Now, who is the customer? Customer is the farmer. What does the farmer do? He goes to the shop, buys a can, sprays the can and the crop. Now, you are going to tell this customer, in my plant I have some safe process, so instead of 4 dollars you pay me at 20 dollars, he is not going to pay. 
the safety of the process is within the battery limit of the plant. It does not affect the ultimate customer. So, to tell him that inside my factory I am using a safe process, so instead of 4 dollars now you pay 20, you know, the safe, not workable. He is going to look at some other product which may be at 5 dollar or a 6 dollar a kg, which may not be as efficient or safe, he is going to use that. Therefore, we are not excited. They went back, developed another process, another US patent. You said not good enough. They went back, developed a third process and came to talk to us. We looked at it and we realized that they reached the limits of chemistry. What I mean by limits of chemistry is what you see that B is a highly reactive chemical. It gives you 100 percent conversion, 100 percent yield. Anything else you do, you cannot beat that. So, whatever they are doing, they reach the limits of chemistry. We said chemistry is global. If we are reaching the limits of chemistry, everybody else will reach the limits of chemistry. So, what is the world doing? And then we did the whole search. 44 patents were issued by that time. You look at them. Names BSF, Bayer, DuPont, Monsanto, Union Carbide, Amaco, BP, everybody who is who of the chemical world. We looked at all 44 patents, analyzed them. Again, we will not get into chemistry, there are 5 approaches people are using. We analyze details of each approach and realize that everybody has reached the limits of chemistry. When that happened, people started asking fundamental question. Why did accident take place? MIC leaked from the tank. Question was asked, do we have to store MIC? On a detailed thought, answer is no. So, people change the process so that as soon as MIC is formed, it is consumed, is reacted further, so that you do not have to store it at all. That is what I call as in situ generation of isocyanate. So, world solve their problem by making changes in the existing process in plant by consuming as soon as isocyanate was generated. Why I am telling this story is, if you do not look at the patents, you do not get to see what others are doing and how finally problem gets solved. You can be happy that you have US patent, it is in your biodata, it is in the institutional list, a company list, but nothing beyond that. Nobody in the market that wants it. And when we looked at this, to tell you frankly, we were not working on polycarbonate. We did not start working on polycarbonate. When we looked at it, we got idea for polycarbonate. We worked in polycarbonate, those are the patterns we sold to GE. Because there are three major players in world in polycarbonate, G, Bayer and Dow. Subsequent Japanese manufacturer come up, the technological is the three guys. And G and Bayer basically invented polycom at the same time and they have some kind of unwritten cartel among themselves. G takes care of US, Bayer takes care of Europe. Now, you have to go and license somebody. So, we went and licensed to G, but that thought to work on polycom came out of this analysis. Monsanto used this chemistry to get into polyurethanes. So, if you do not look at it, you do not get to see what the competitive position is, what everybody else is doing and this was the first time I had done it. Before that we had, I had personally never looked at the patent information and since then we have been doing it regularly. So, today we do all these activities, technology scenario analysis, what are MP landscapes, the competitive intelligence studies 
Procter and Gamble wants to know what Unilever is doing. Unilever wants to know what Laurel is doing. Technology movement assessment. How technology gets developed, evolved, what direction it is taking, where it is going. New product development studies. I told you everybody has certain core capabilities. Rest are required where they are available based in the world. Now, where do you find out where are they available? Who has them? Obviously, go to the patent information. Free of adopted study, already explained to you. Research planning study, identifying gaps and then launching a program. See, very often we come from academic background, we do our PhD. And when we get into the real world, we do an extension of our PhD work because we are comfortable in that area or we work in the area which is fashionable to work. In a sense, there is superconductivity in news, nanotechnology is new, there is a government funding available. So, we just write proposal in that area without realizing does somebody want it and what are the real gaps and human resource management I told you. So, search analysis today drives the research strategy and supports innovation management. Lot of people do market research, spend lot of tons of money on market research, but patent research is equally important. One of our multinational customers did patent search, identified the gap in the market then went and did a market research, identified gap in the market, just positioned both the studies and define the characteristics of the product which meets that gap, wrote the patent claims which will protect that product, took those claims to R&D saying now design your experiment to match this, completely reverse way of working. In research you will think something valuable will come which you will patent. Here you are designing for IP, completely in reverse way. This is very often real life industry works. So, people have now integrated patent search analysis in whole technology strategy formulation. I will briefly show you a few case studies. Here the proposal was use enriched oxygen into the IC engine. So, identify technologies which can replace, yeah, anything. Identify the technology which can use for replacing air with enriched oxygen in a combustion chamber. Question is why to use it? You can have a small combustion chamber, it will save the fuel combustion is complete and also the emissions are reduced. So, all ice engine patterns with the integrated oxygen engine were considered for analysis and we looked at what are the oxygen separation technologies. What we found out was a large number of approaches people are used for separating that oxygen. Right from gas separation membranes membrane reactor, adsorption, chemical separation, magnetic separation, liquefaction, electrochemical, ionization. You very often cannot imagine the concepts people think about it. Majority of patterns on a gas separation membranes followed by adsorption and then other technologies. Then you look at gas separation because that is membrane. Question is what type of membrane? Polymeric membrane, zeolite membrane, ceramic membrane, other types. Again in when you look at the polymer because the largest number, hollow fiber, tubular type, spiral type, plate type. Again, when you look at polymer, what kind of porosity are you talking about? Because you are separating a gas, porous, non-porous, 
molecular membranes and so on. It depends on the level of detail you want to get it. So, you can keep on you know detailing and doing your search and analysis. So, our key findings widely focused technology was gas separation of membrane technology and adsorption, use of selectively permeable membrane and perm selective membrane on the rise, technology with fewer patterns for magnetic separator gap separator like gas centrifuge and there are some emerging technology like electrochemical cell and membrane reactors. So, you will very often look at this kind of emerging technology like membrane reactors the advantages it offers. This is a second case study which had to do with the chases for the light color car body. Automobile chases as you know is a structural element for an automobile and usually made of the steel frame holds the body engine and everything. Now, you want to reduce the weight. So, can we replace the steel by a tubular component. So, when we looked at the patterns you find large number of patterns longitudinal beam chases, tubular frame chases, rail frame chases, space frame, structure frame these are the number of patterns you find. Then you also look at the shape of those frames again box beam chases, ladder frame chases, edge shape, a frame, foot frame and so on. So, technology focus was in that area for using tubular components. We are doing for an Indian company which was proposing this which includes metal, plastic, other cellular materials. Maximum number of patterns were on hydroformed steel or aluminum tubular component. Now, these hydroform materials increase the strength or stiffness to structure member and have variety of application. We also looked at the design configuration. All our data centers you know computer data centers have lot of energy you know the heat is too much that heat needs to be removed and it has become a major cost center in running data centers. So, idea was to look at what kind of technologies are being used for those energy efficiency. So, overall patenting activity was shown increase which means the problem is of contemporary nature lot of activity is going on. Then what are the different approaches people have taken? What is the kind of technology lever it has? What benefit gives? What kind of companies are there and who are the inventors? So, managing air flow is one approach and there technology lever is prevent mixing of hot air and cold air using panels, curtains etcetera. Power distribution optimization do a load balancing or temperature control adjustment through evaporative cooling. When you look at those technologies how growth it is shown the technology curve, you are familiar with the S curve. This shows technology is still not reached maturity level, it is in the growth phase all those technologies and there are new approaches which have been introduced like temperature adjustment control using free cooling. And the other technologies. So, preference of free cooling technology such as low temperature ambient air and evaporative cooling in addition to maximum minimizing hot cold air mixing. What are the trends over a period of time? So, evaporative cooling is dominant over the top assigning, and you find some new companies which are recent entrants and you get to see certain kind of a network people working in the similar areas same approach and some people were different from rest. Geographical distribution majority of patterns was from US and 
when we looked at it majority of applications were yet to be granted. So, overall area was witnessing growth shown by the patenting activity and technology which were in focus were by way of cooling and there are few companies which are aggressively patenting in that free cooling area. The Belgian company which was established recently, Google was filing under the name of some other startup and Eco Cooling a British company with expertise vapor cooling was claiming something by reducing electricity bill as long as 90 percent. And there are companies with very small portfolio which you can approach for licensing or for merger and acquisition and so on. This is a case of insulin as you know insulin is required for diabetics. We actually had done a landscape study for non-invasive insulin treatment. That's where it requires an injection and patients are not very comfortable. So, a lot of interest in non-invasive insulin treatment. So, we had looked at all kind of possibilities, ocular, dermal, everything and had zeroed down on pulmonary that is through the lungs. The reason it was short listed was lung has a higher surface area. So, bioabsorption is much more. So, having chosen that as a area we looked at patents in that pulmonary insulin. After doing all this kind of analysis we came across two short companies NL therapeutic systems and RLI and analyze those portfolios. There are three type of patents, one is on formulations, other was on apparatus and systems for inhalation and third was powder filling technique. Now, you look at the patents. In the formulation itself, they have different approaches. Now, again without getting into technical details of that, we looked at each of those approach and what is the benefit of that approach. So, improve flowability, easy transfer and metering of those medicament particles, appropriate friability, preserves the protein stability, insulin is basically a protein and powder dispersibility provide physical stability, dispersibility, consistent dosing. We also looked at each of those apparatus, what are the benefits of their device, advantages the device offers, there is a complete dispersion of medicament, minimize the waste, enhances the accuracy and precision of dosage, agglomerate as they are formed are broken down and delivery is independent of patients inspiratory flow rate. And the competitor's patent had an interesting feature. In addition to normal patents, they had some kind of breathing maneuver increasing the bioavailability of inhaled insulin. So, they had additional set of patents on that feature. So, we looked at their device, what are the advantages of their device? The precision is in dosing, but that breath guidance system was because of that additional feature and therefore, onset of action was improved. These are typical startup companies, they do not have marketing and financial muscle to take this product to the customer. So, they get acquired or their joint partnerships. So, in the first case Pfizer and Avent is collaborated what is called Exubra. In the second case Novo Nordisk which is a Danish company, they collaborated and it was called Eric system. We looked at both the systems current status, both had gone through phase 3 clinical trials which is required by FDA regulation. Exubra had already put up an application in Europe. Exubra formulation was dry powder form, Eric's was liquid form, device was purely mechanical, 
Here it was battery powered electronic system, microprocessor, there are no battery or chip and here they had additional breath guidance system. And these were also prototypes at that point of time. Now, this kind of a patent portfolio analysis when you look at competitors, it tells you what are the features which can be used as a strategies or can be responsible for success. Stability, dose adjustment, clogging dispersion of glorbates, accuracy of doses, combination and the cost. So, you track the competitive product development through their patents and change your strategies. This is again a case of the drugs. All the drugs we use, only small portions are used by the body. The rest gets excreted. So, there are approaches that higher portion is used by the body. So, in addition to the drug, some adjuncts are used which is called bio enhancers. So, there is a higher availability of this drug to the body. So, one of our laboratory had developed a bio enhancer which was plant based or piperin and we looked into this patent portfolio. We found there are two type of bioenhancer, chemical and the plant based and again in the plant based we discovered there are three types, piperin based, essential oil and citrus based. We looked at the patenting activity all three type of and how technology has progressed, moved over a year of time, number of patents, who are the assignees. CSR had the largest number of patents followed by some pharma companies. When you look at this map, the first patent was filed in India followed by the US patent. So, this laboratory did a trial with anti TB and anti leprosy drugs. So, when they filed the patent, they wrote the patent on anti tuberculosis and leprosy. They did not realize this is a very generic concept. They restricted their claim to only these two class of drugs. When patents were published, industry looked at it and found this has wider applicability. Other people picked up that idea, tried in other therapeutic areas and wrote the patents. So, you see this company has tried for non steroidal compounds, Sabina for nutrition compound, Cadilla for cardiovascular and nervous system and so on. <coughs> when we looked at this we realized our mistake. Had we been smart enough, we could have generically covered this concept stopping everybody from entering the field. Because you tried on anti tuberi and anti leprosy, you wrote a pattern on anti tuberi leprosy, leaving the field open for anybody to walk in. If you were smart enough, you could have had a broader claim and scope coverage where rest of the people would have come to you to take a license. If you do not look at this, you do not know what is happening to your patent and how other people are building upon your knowledge and you also do not learn from the mistakes. So, you get to see how technology has moved and initially developed for a particular purpose was taken by other people into different different areas. Again a study for the glucose meter which is the rate of diabetes as you know measurement of diabetes again and you have a prick. The new generation of glucometers coming up. I do not mind telling because it is an old story Titan you know is a watchmaker and they thought they are a precision engineering company. They wanted to diversify into medical diagnostics and they picked up this product. 
and applied for some grant under some program. At this point of time, before giving that grant, we evaluated this. There are basically three technology areas in this product glucose analysis, sampling, and measurement. And we looked into the patterns on each of those areas. In analysis, if you know the olden times, like your litmus paper, you used to get a paper to look at the sugar in the urine. So, there is the earliest pattern of that formulation to miles of 1960. And over a period of time, different companies have patterns on advancements. Till the final one was embossed test strip system of Amira Medical in 2000. As far as sampling is concerned, compact disposable blood sampling unit with familiar Lancet, Medscan, 1987, like other companies. And over a period of time, uses a microporation electroporation strategy for withdrawing sample of analysis of blood glucose. And beam of sonic energy are had like pressure to puncture the spectrum. And measurement of electromagnetic radiation or excitation lesser beam application of Raman spectrum, the latest technology. Now, you will never imagine somebody using Raman spectra for diabetics. When we presented this study, Pat and Rayla did not their cup of tea. Normally, if you think of this, you will start doing some work investing into this and then realize much later having spent time, money and energy. But when you look at this whole landscape, then early in the game, only by just doing some study which will not cost much, you can make the decision. So, these are the products at that point at which are under development. And even if you want to go ahead, this kind of a scan also gives you an idea that products which are likely to succeed should be ones which are user friendly, absolutely non invasive, based on optical measurement strategy like IR, and which provide continuous blood levels for light control devices. We already talked about freedom to operate study. All of you heard of BT cotton? the cotton genetically modified content introduced in India by Monsanto. When it was introduced, one of our lab had the technology for BT cotton and one of the seed company also had the technology for BT cotton that is JK seeds. Our lab wanted to license and JK seed wanted to practice. It was felt that Monsanto will sue them, there will be a problem with Monsanto. So, we did this freedom to operate study. We thought we will finish in 3 months. It took us 10 months. There are 600 patterns of BT cotton and 450 belong to Monsanto. So, what we call as a thicket, thicket of patterns. You basically create a kind of fort which nobody can penetrate. And one of the Monsanto patterns runs into 200 pages. For freedom to operate, we have to do claim by claim analysis. Product should not infringe any of the claims. Therefore, it takes you so much time. By the time you are reading the 200 patent, you have forgotten what was written in 20th patent. And therefore, those kind of half a million dollar you pay for that one dollar or one page of letter. So, there are basically eight technology conversions in the ultra content, you have to make sure that none of them is infringed. We got away with it because Monsanto patent in India was pre-2005, at that point of time we were not guaranteeing biotech patent, so they had just two process patents. 
if they would have had product patents at that point of time, we would not have been free to operate. But if in the context of today, if you have to see if they had a post 2005 patent, then we would have not have freedom to operate. This is again a case of uh, an Indian famous medicinal plant which is called Indian ginseng. This has an active principle which is very small 0 0.08 percent. So, the proposal on the table was do a biotechnological intervention, increase that proportion and we were told it is an Indian medicinal plant nobody has touched it, there are no patents and all that kind of a thing. And we said that cannot be the case because in the plant systems what is called metabolic pathways. Those metabolic pathways are very common in the plants. There is so much of research gone into commercial crops to say that nobody has worked on those pathways is not acceptable. So, we did a search. And these are the 8 pathways and here are the patterns on each other. And what was surprising DuPont which is basically a materials company had a maximum number of patterns. So, we were wondering what DuPont is doing it. DuPont had acquired a company called Pioneer Hybrid Seeds as an extension of their business in pesticides and this portfolio of patent had come to DuPont from Pioneer Hybrid Seeds. But we still showed them there are three steps, there are no patents there. So, we said there is a scope of generating intellectual property if you focus your research there. So, those three steps out of the eight. That is how you can use this analysis to plan your research. All these metallic pigments what you see, your cars or whatever metallic, all these are inorganic pigments which are based on heavy metals. All these heavy metals are toxic. So, the world wants to go away from those toxic metals and looking for new pigments. We have rare earths in the south of India. A small part of that rare earth is used for atomic energy purposes. Rest of crude is exported. So, idea was to look that as a resource for making pigments because they are metals which are other than atomic energy they are not been explored. Now, there is international convention which each color is numbered, named and the shade number is given. That is called color index. So, C i red 103 is a particular shade of red. Now, if you look at lead, cadmium, mercury, all these are heavy metals. So, what you see on the left hand side is a traditional toxic pigment today used in the marketplace. On right hand side, what you see is eco friendly rare earth pigment which can be developed, which looked at each of the colors, orange, yellow, you can see again here is cadmium, lead and so on, green again cadmium here, chromium here, blue. Now, based on this study, one of her laboratory launched the research program. They developed a blue pigment, have a US patent, and entered into collaboration with industry to commercialize it. So, again, this is how you use all this information for research. 
this is not very clear chart, but in a minute I will tell you what it is. Arthritis is a serious issue especially for aged people. Now, proposal was to work on some plant based arthritis problem. We looked at what causes arthritis at the molecular cellular level and all the patterns in those area and mapped it. As you can see down there are a large number of patterns. What you see in the upper boxes below arthritis is those molecular mechanisms. On the top that collagen is this, there are no patterns in that area. So, this research group which wanted to work, we did a whole study and showed them the rest of the whole area is crowded, there are no patterns in collagenesis. So, we said if you want to do research, focus on collagenesis. They worked, they filed, they actually have been granted a US patent. Now, further they are working on this because in pharma industry it takes a long time. But again, how do you look at this information to identify that gap white space and start working on that? So, I will stop here. If there are any questions, I will take it. It is just a flavor of some case studies. We will fix up and technically, we will fix up. I will let you, Shakti, know. Saturday, you do not mind, no? Good. We will have to. And what we will do, we will run you through now. Ah, other day, this somebody asked me a question where to find the information. I tell you, there are two types of pattern databases. One is what the government offices produce. A USPTO has a database which gives you patterns from 1790 till what was issued this Monday. Today, what I mean, last week was issued. Today evening, they will upload it. 1719 to 1975 all the patterns are images. Afterwards all the text base which you can search through the documents also. So, each country patent office has a database on the web including the Indian patent office. So, you can search those country specific databases. European patent office produces a global database. It called e space, e s p s e. You put in the Google, you will get the e space. That is a global database which you can search. WIPO has all the patent PCT applications called patent scope. Now, all these are free. By taking this as a primary information, there are people who curate these databases and lot of value. And I am saying, see what happens, the USPTO will when they add this 5000, they will add this in the serial wise as they come along. They will not classify other than the IPC number they will put. They will not read through and all that. There are people who read through these documents, index it, classify it, curate it. So, a lot of noise is reduced. But though databases are kind of paid databases, you have to pay for them. IIT does have an access to couple of those databases. If you cannot find in central library, check with SOM. SOM does have a access. You can use them or later on we are in the job, you can subscribe them. The difference between both of them is in the second case, search is more efficient, you get less noise, you get less junk. In the first case, you will get lot of junk. In a sense, wherever those words appear, etcetera, may come, may not be relevant to you. But if you do not have money to pay, I know <laughs> it is a balance. Then there are search, uh, there are tools which are also for analysis. There are some free tools, there are some paid tools. Again, they do different kind of job. So, maybe when we run a tutorial, we will give you the which are those you listing. So, any more questions?